Okay, welcome back. We are streaming live on Facebook and we are recording. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and thank you for allowing us to take that brief intermission. I hope you enjoyed the music. My students absolutely love that music. So we were able to set up the streaming, students got their presentations to me, so I'm super excited. Um, and wow, that was awesome from Judge Scriven. I've known Judge Scriven for the five years I've worked at the Middle District of Florida Courthouse, and I also know her husband, and they are great mentors. They're both trailblazers and uh, very busy. So for her to take time out of her schedule to share her Saturday morning with us and tell us those stories and share her wisdom, was um, greatly appreciated. And we thank her so much because our presenting sponsor for the program class, 20, class of 2021 is the Bench Bar Fund of the Middle District of Florida. And the Bench Bar Fund is um, a fund that allows the courts and the judges to fund projects for the bench and the bar and particularly community service that helps reach out to the community and help. And so I was so delighted when she agreed to be our keynote because it goes along with them being the presenting sponsor. Okay. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Brianna Coleman and um, Professor Hardrick, you can go to the next slide. I'm just gonna be talking um, a little bit about what I've taken away from the Journey to Esquire program. So a little bit about me is, my name is Brianna Coleman. I go to Thomas M. Cooley Law School. I'm at the Tampa Bay campus. I am a 3L, I'll be graduating in May. And I love helping people, particularly youth, and I have a passion for legal research and writing. Um, I also, my ultimate goal is to become a judge in the juvenile court system. You can go to the next one. All right, so one thing that I've taken away from the Journey to Esquire program um, has been lawyer wellness. Um, this is the first point I'd like to discuss because I feel like it is very important, especially um, being a minority in the legal field as well. So life is about balance. And I know we just talked about that and Judge Scriven said there is no balance. Um, I do feel like if the legal field and my career path, it is important to have some form of a work-life balance. And that would be making sure that I'm taking care of my mental and my physical well-being. And within this module, we've worked on mindfulness and uh, we took some time to think about what happiness looks like for us in the legal field. And for me, it is that work-life balance. Um, I didn't want to get caught up working 60, 70 hours a week for a big firm. I decided that I wanted to do something a little bit smaller scale. Um, and that work-life balance was really important to me. And also giving myself some grace. Um, as a new attorney, I definitely will make mistakes along the way. So just making sure that I give myself the grace I need and knowing, keeping that confidence and knowing that I am where I'm supposed to be, it will help me get to where I am going to be in the future. You can go next. Diversity was another module um, that stuck out to me throughout this Journey to Esquire program. And that's because it's a really important lesson for all of us. Um, I know that as an African-American and a minority and a woman in the legal field, um, I'll deal with a lot of microaggressions. But for me, it's my job not to react, but to educate as my response. So I know that we're here to represent the underrepresented and make change in a legal field. So it is very important that we have diversity because the world is so diverse. And this uphill battle with the uh, microaggressions and things similar um, are going to be a struggle, but we are gonna win at the end. And to reach different people, we need to see different people in our legal field and be that motivation for those who want to do what we are doing 
So I think it's very important um, that we have diversity. We'll go to the next one. Leadership was another important module. Um, Okay, I'm back. Uh, leadership was another important module. And um, I felt like it was important to be a leader and not necessarily a boss because leaders inspire other leaders. And that is one thing that I can take away from this journey to Esquire program is that I want to inspire those to lead through my actions, not just what I say, but what I do. and. Leadership is very important because it's what you do when no one is looking. It is your honesty, your ethical behavior, and having integrity no matter what. So I think that this was um, a very important portion of the program because leadership starts in your community and you also want to show people that you are able to lead so they will want to lead as well. Next slide. Professionalism as well. Uh, during this module, we talked about having a solid resume and elevator pitch. And that was so important for me because right after the module, I went home, I fixed up my resume, got my elevator pitch ready and I was able to, you know, get my foot in the door with even just interviews based off of having a solid resume and an elevator pitch. So that was very important to me. And as Judge Scriven has stated before, the professionalism is what's gonna get you far in your life. So people are watching when you least expect them to. So having the utmost professionalism uh, will just carry with you throughout your legal career and people will see that and they'll respect you and you'll be able to do things that others may not because they don't have that reputation of being a professional. All right, next one. All right, and finally, the last thing I wanted to talk about was paying it forward, which I talked about it last because I felt like it was so important and it definitely makes the most impact on the legal field. And for me, it's giving because someone has given to you in the past. So when we are helping others, we are also helping ourselves. And you never know what good can come out of just being kind to others, giving someone a chance that maybe thought they never had a chance. And especially in the legal field as a minority, I feel that it's important to pay it forward because you, we want more of us represented in the legal field, more minorities, and it's about what you can do to help others so that way people can get to where they need to be and you never know in return if somebody can end up helping you along the way. Next slide. <clears throat> so what are my future plans? Uh, first. One of my future plans is to inspire. And through this program, I was able to be given the tools to do just that and to make change, which is what Journey to Esquire is all about. Leadership, change, inspiring, getting our minorities in the community and making sure that we are change agents. And lastly, it's going to be to pay it forward. So whatever I get from this opportunity, I hope that others can learn through my experience and wanna do this if they're contemplating being in the legal field and not 100% sure. I hope that my experience will set the precedent for future generations to know that they, one, can do it, two, are able to do it, and three, can make a change within the world. So those are my future plans. And you can go to the next slide. So I just wanna take time to thank Professor Hardrick for this opportunity. Um, thank the Journey to Esquire board members and sponsors. 
And also thank you for to the fellow scholars and participants in this program. Um, I really enjoyed myself and I will definitely be spreading the word and I wanna know how I can keep this community and stay involved with Journey to Esquire. So thank you all for your time. Thank you so much, Brianna, that was awesome. So many lessons learned. When I joined Journey to Esquire, I was seeking a community that supported diverse students like myself, as well as a community that reflected my drive and passion for the law. For you to truly understand how invaluable this experience has been to me, I need to let you in on what my journey has been, especially because I know there are others who share my struggles and it is with programs such as Journey to Esquire that I believe they can also find their own path to success. And you can hit the next slide. I grew up in Los Angeles in the 90s and early 2000s. My mother is an undocumented immigrant from Mexico, my father an immigrant from Honduras with a temporary permit to work. My father an immigrant from, um, at a young age, I was a translator for my mom, the oldest of three, and grew up with a heavy understanding of the word responsibility. I'm sorry, Professor Hardrick, I think I sent you <laughs> the wrong presentation and I don't know what's next. So. To avoid any of that, um, you can find like a slide that just has pictures that would be great. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> um, and then if everybody else would just bear with me, I have a really interesting story, I promise. Um, so as a first generation American, I was the first to do many things. And I have often felt as if I've been on this journey alone. Doing things on my own was like a badge of honor I proudly wore. However, I decided to finally stop telling myself that story when I discovered Journey to Esquire. But I do need to be honest and not so much honest for myself or the people who know me, rather for the younger generations that are next. They need to know that success looks like a lot of failures leading you right to where you need to be. You don't need to have it all figured out to move forward. I remember starting undergrad thinking I picked the wrong school when I saw there was no major or degree for law. I had no idea that law school was a whole separate school and degree until my college counselor told me so right before my sophomore year. I spent the first three out of four years of undergrad trying to explain to my parents why I needed so much money for books, why I needed a meal plan, why I needed to study so late, my stress and guilt over the sacrifices my parents were making showed in my grades. This leads me to the next important lesson. When things go wrong, do what you need to do, but do not give up. The summer break after my first year in undergrad, I received an email from the registrar's office, subject line, academic probation. My heart sank, my cheeks, flushed red, and I sat on the edge of my bed to finish reading the email. I had no idea you had to maintain a certain GPA. And I couldn't tell my parents. I couldn't picture their faces or their disappointment. I overloaded my plate to bring up my GPA because I refused having to utter the words I got kicked out of school. I told no one, actually, to this day, I have yet to tell this story to many people, including my parents, so mom, dad, if you're watching, hi. <laughs> when I finally got the hang of undergrad, I made a promise to myself that I would get law school right and seize every opportunity. I had a list of 10 schools, my first choice being Stetson. I studied for the LSAT like if it was my second part-time job. I had plan A through Z because my mediocre GPA was not going to keep me out of law school. This brings me to my next lesson. When things do not go according to plan, change the plan, but never the goal. I was a week into applying for schools when I found out I was pregnant. I had two thoughts in that moment. One, I need to go to law school. And two, I can't believe there's going to be a baby. My due date was in August when classes usually start. In that moment, I refused to be yet another statistic of a Latina who gets married and has kids early without a career. I felt my dream of becoming a lawyer get further away. I heard the noise. 
the noise of just another one pregnant at 22 with no career. People have said I was brave and I have said no, I was afraid. My fear of not becoming a lawyer was greater than my fear of going to law school with a baby. So I adjusted my plans. I applied to Pooley Law because it would allow me to start sooner. It just so happened my daughter came into this world the day of my contracts won finals. I was off the next three weeks and then classes resumed, so I did too. My first year of law school, I learned how to be a mom, brief cases, nurse a newborn, make outlines, and sleep on a very random schedule. I got good grades, dean's list, honor roll, earned two certificate of merits, but I knew it was time for the next ambition. When someone tells you it can't be done, don't believe it. It's a reflection of their limitations, not yours. I remember first touring the Stetson Law Campus, Florida's first law school, and thinking, wow, this is not meant for someone like me. But I promised myself I would try. I got in. And when I got into Stetson, I still felt like I had no idea what I was doing. The transition came with its own set of new and different obstacles. The same year I started my 2L year was probably one of the hardest years for me. The next lesson, you learn more from failures than successes. My parents had just moved across the country and their immigration case was initiated. My dad's TPS was revoked. I petitioned for his residency and we waited. We waited for the hearing date to be set. We waited for the decision to be made. We waited for my dad's fate to be decided. And while I tried to keep up with my classes at my new school and my obligations to my own family, the question of whether my dad would have to return to a country he had not set foot in 30 years lingered. That leads me to my first fail in law school. Anyone who has gone through it or is in the practice of law now knows that mixing up deadlines is just about the worst thing you can do. Let's just call it a bad week. My brain could not balance every obligation on my plate. I missed a hard deadline. And to this day, I am forever grateful my professor did not fail me, but my GPA did suffer. And at the end of that 12 year, my dad's hearing was scheduled for the middle of my semester. I didn't share this with anyone, but I took off to California with my case books and notebooks to be there for my dad on a Thursday. That Thursday morning, we left the courtroom without a decision. The uncertainty lingered. It wasn't until the day before my first final of that semester that my dad called me to say, the judge said, Welcome to America. I cried in the parking lot of the library. I was so relieved. As hard as that year was for me, the failures taught me it was time to learn how to ask for help. My third year looked so much brighter. I had the mental space to focus on my classes and get involved on campus. I volunteered. I completed externships, worked for a criminal defense lawyer. I even did an independent research project with the help of a professor. And with the help of this program, I was exposed to many different career paths and different lawyers. For example, I would have never learned what a clerkship was or known to even ask about it exposure it makes a big difference when you take someone with a background similar to mine and expose them to the endless possibilities that exist at this new height i now have a community that i can turn to and ask for their perspectives and wisdom that la the last very important lesson i take from my journey to esquire is pay it forward my mentors have led by example I cannot possibly take this experience and not do anything with it. I did not get here alone, no matter what I wanted to believe. I want to thank Professor Jocelyn Hardrick for always reminding me there is more than one means to a dream. I want to thank the board members for putting on such helpful and informative presentations for us that taught us so many skills. And I want to thank Judge Baggy Hernandez, my first mentor in this program, who has exemplified what it means to pay it forward and be there for someone who needs a moment of your time. So many lessons learned. And of course, thank you to my husband and daughter who have cheered me on from day one and my parents who have set me from no matter what failures and successes I go through. Sincerely, thank you to everyone who is present in this moment for your contributions, efforts, and energy. The energy and efforts that were poured into me, I have no doubts 
They will trickle through my own efforts and energy that I pour into someone else, whether it is a case that it is in front of me, a fellow peer or a mentee. Thank you. Thank you so much, Denia. It's so brave yeah. of you to share that story. And um, we've heard it before as a you know small group, but now we have you know 40 plus people, Facebook Live, <laughs> it was recorded. And your uh, story of learning how to, like you said, change your plans, but never to go, is now someone else's pathway to achieve the same thing. So thank you. All right, so hello everyone. Um, <clears throat> thank you everyone for being here on a Saturday morning this early. My name is Kizaya Hill. I am a 2021 graduate from WMU Cooley Law School. And this is my presentation about what Journey to Esquire has done for me and the impact it has had on me. You can continue. This is one of my favorite all-time quotes. It, is, it always seems impossible until it's done. That was how I felt when I started law school and it, that feeling never went away. It carried with me throughout law school. With this program, there's three main themes that I got from the program. One, the program embraced me with inclusion. Two, the program empowered me with introspection. And three, the program emboldened me with inspiration. As I go through the slides, which I promise there's not many, I'm going to explain and talk about each of these things that I received from this program. You can go to the next slide. I think you have to press the uh, space bar, click it for it to play. Oh, is it a video? Yes. Oh, okay. Give me one second then. So I have to share it in a way that optimizes. There we go. Okay. Um, space. Okay, so in this video, this is my son, Kobe, and he's in preschool and he's frustrated because he has a problem where he knows the answer is 11, but he's counting on his fingers and he realizes he only has 10 fingers. Are you kidding me? How am I supposed to get this done? So with the three themes I mentioned earlier, that was one of the issues that I had um, with going through law school and what I'm going to do after law school. I know the answer, but I don't know how to get there. I know my end goal is to be an Esquire, an attorney, but I don't know how to get there. I have 10 fingers. How do I get to 11? You can go to the next slide. So the first thing is inclusion. I think this is one of the most powerful things that this program offers is inclusion. As you can see in this picture, this is a very diverse group of people um, and it has been as far as this program has started. Um, to be quite candid with you, one of the most reassuring things when you're in a program like this or when you go to law school is to see people that look like you. Minorities, we're minorities in law school even more so than we are in any other field or aspect of our lives. So with this, being included gives you that comfort and gives you that stabilization and gives you the drive and the confidence to know that you can do this and there's other people with you who are like family. From day one in this program, it's been extremely inclusive. I've never felt like an outsider. Our board members were extremely helpful, extremely understanding. They never, I never felt intimidated even though we were constantly uh, meeting with people who are judges, people who are attorneys, people who own their own firms. Um, so being around all of these diverse backgrounds and seeing the success that they achieved was extremely beneficial to me as far as my path and what I wanna do and how I'm going to get there. 
Um, and another aspect that inclusion affected was with COVID. Um, I haven't shared this with many people, but I will share it here because my presentation, I feel like it's personal. I wanted to share this because a lot of people don't talk about this. So I struggle with depression and anxiety and it um, sometimes can be very severe. So when COVID happened, I felt estranged from my school. I wasn't able to be in the library. I wasn't able to be around my friends. So I felt very isolated and alone. Being in this program reconnected me with people from my school and from my profession, and that did a lot for me. That brought me back to where I need to be. That brought my mind space back to focusing on my end goal. <clears throat> you can go to the next slide. So the next thing is introspection. With this program, we did several modules about, not even about law school, not even about applications and jobs. We focused on looking inside ourselves and balancing ourselves and finding our center. I think that's so important. One of the most important things I learned about introspection is having the mindset of gratitude. We forget a lot about the things that are going good for us because we focus so much on negative things and we forget to have gratitude. So when you practice gratitude daily, that helps a lot with moving forward and achieving goals. And especially when you have um, issues like I do with depression, anxiety, where a lot of times you just want to sleep all day. So it's important to focus on the good things that are happening. Um, we also spoke about and practiced mindfulness. For me, the definition and the concept of mindfulness is paying attention to your mental state. You'd be surprised how often we negative self-speak, how often we talk down on ourselves more so than anyone else does. We um, constantly say we can't do this or we have doubts about what we can do. Um, so practicing mindfulness, always being aware of what's going on in here so that you are ready for your next obstacle and you're not always putting yourself down. Um, it's, it's about strength, it's about mental strength. Your mental strength is one of the most important things to get you through law school and to help you succeed after you're done with law school. Um, so those things I'm very grateful for that we got to focus on and got to hone in on in practice because I'm still using those skills today and I will be using them in the future. This is also a video. So in this video, and it's, it's one of my favorite videos of Kobe because he, as you can see, he's walking proudly, confidently through the living room and then boom, he stumbles and takes, takes the fall. Um, but he bounces right back up. And not only does he bounce back up, he just shakes it off like, ah, I'm gonna keep on moving. So this for me is the inspiration that I gained from this program. As I mentioned earlier, we spoke with so many professionals um, from all different backgrounds, all different walks of life. Um, you heard Denny's story. My story is similar. I always tell people I did life backwards. I, I got married and I had children. And um, Kobe, I feel like he went through law school with me because he was two at the time. So he was always around. He always wanted to be next to me studying, right up under my armpit, always looking through my casebook. So it was when you have a family, when you're a mother, your life, your story is different. You don't have the luxury of not always being there for your family. You don't have the luxury of just focusing on yourself because other people need you and depend on you. But hearing these other stories from people who look like me and people who had obstacles and even worse obstacles than I did, that gave me the comfort of knowing that I'm not alone in this journey. There are so many other people who are just like me and who share the same struggles, but it's just that we don't talk about them. And I think the conversation about these struggles is vital because this is not something, our struggles are not something that we should keep secret because you never know what someone else is going through and someone else could be saving, having your exact same story. When you share your story, you could be helping someone else. We heard from people who got denied from jobs, who submitted hundreds of applications. 
but they kept trying. They tripped and they got up. So that was one thing that I realized I need to do is don't worry about falling. Focus on getting back up and moving forward. Focus on learning from those mistakes that you made. Obstacles and challenges are temporary, but your end goal is permanent. And that's where I'm headed toward. Um, so seeing the now successful attorneys, knowing that they were in my shoes at one point is a relief and an inspiration to me that I know that at one point I too will be successful. So to conclude, I do want to give a heartfelt thank you to each and every person who participated in this program. Uh, first and foremost, the volunteers. Many of them are, and actually all of them are professionals in this field. They're lawyers, attorneys, um, judges. They're all very busy. I'm a law student, I'm busy. I don't even have a career yet. Uh, many of these our modules are always on Saturday morning and they would be there fresh faced, ready to go and so eager to talk to us. And that even goes back to inclusion. They were ready to help us. They wanted to help us. So I think that one of the most valuable things that you can give a person is your time. The fact that so many people listed here stopped and gave us their time is an invaluable gift to us. So um, thank you very much from the bottom of my heart for your participation in this program. And also a heartfelt thank you to Jocelyn Hardrick. I cannot say enough about this woman. The output that she puts into the community, the focus that she puts on students, the care, the love and support that she gives students is beyond anything I've ever seen. Um, so thank you Jocelyn Hardrick for being the founder of this program. I am interested um, and excited to see where this program is going to go. Um, it's just the outreach will continue as the program goes on through the years. Um, and it, it's already such a successful program. And also lastly, but not least, thank you to all of our esteemed board members who helped put together all the modules, organize all of this, help guide us and coach us. And you're always there. You make yourselves available. Um, so I appreciate your time and your efforts. And with that, that concludes my presentation. Thank you. My name is Brian Love. I'm a graduating uh, JD MBA student from Stetson University College of Law. Uh, I'm only one week away from graduation and I'm ecstatic um, to finally uh, get to that portion of my journey to Esquire. I'm extremely grateful to be a part of the class of 2021. 20, uh, and first I wanna start by uh, thanking everyone that has uh, assisted with this program. Number one, uh, Ms. Jocelyn Hardrick, uh, for being the founder uh, and also director of the program. And I think everyone would agree, uh, Ms. Jocelyn puts her heart and soul into, into this program. And you can feel it in every module, um, every uh, message that she sends and communications online. And it's uh, felt, I, I felt it throughout this program and I'm so very grateful. I like to thank all the directors, uh, board of directors, um, also the sponsors for this program. And my sponsored, uh, well, my mentor, uh, Judge Day, I think he's on on the uh, video this morning. And I really appreciate all of our conversations and the guidance that he's provided throughout this program. Uh, I'd like to thank also uh, the fellow scholars uh, and participants and all of the module uh, instructors. Thank you. So when I was thinking about my experience with this program, um, I went back to uh, my time at my undergraduate um, program at uh, Florida a and University. I had the opportunity to um, participate in a couple uh, student campaigns. Um, I was student body vice president, student body president, and it was a common theme uh, or saying that was developed by one of my good friends, uh, Vince Evans. Um, he's a FAMU alum, and he's now also the de deputy director of uh, public engagement for our vice president uh, Kamala Harris he would always say rattlers hold high the torch of leadership for we stand on the shoulders of giants and I think about that um, and it also resonated with me with uh, Judge Scriven's um, message this morning and uh, that's how I felt uh, being a part of this program I had the opportunity to come behind um, attorneys that look like me and they are rockers and shakers uh, in the law community. And for me, that was really a highlight uh, of this program. 
So a couple other highlights uh, that I had during this program is uh, exploring mental wellness. Um, being an attorney and, and becoming a lawyer, it's a marathon and not a sprint. And there have been a lot of um, heightened awareness of mental uh, wellness and addiction within the practice area. And I think that was a great thing throughout this whole program is to highlight the importance of making sure that we um, are aware of our mental status and doing everything we need to do to take care of ourselves. Uh, I really enjoyed the legal writing module. Um, that's something that we all can improve on continually as uh, wanting to be at attorneys. Uh, I, I really enjoyed the bar prep program, and this is different than um, most of the bar prep guidance that we, we've received because um, usually they focus on the mechanics of the test, but this sp specific uh, module focused on mentally preparing to succeed for this test. How do you think about routines? How are we going to focus on our mental health? And a lot of the, the, the challenges with the bar exam is you know, you're, you're climbing Mount Everest and you have to mentally prepare for that. And uh, this module helped us to visualize and develop the tools to make sure that we can, su can succeed uh, as a first time, you know, bar uh, passers. Uh, again, thank you Judge Day for uh, being my program mentor. And I was really um, excited to have you and uh, I, it's always an honor to have an opportunity to have an open line to uh, to a judge and to get their take on on things. So thank you, Judge Day. Uh, some of the program benefits. Thank you, Lord. Uh, bar bar scholarship um, during the during the summer, but before uh, well prepping for the bar. It can be tough uh, not being able to work. You know, we all have responsibilities, we all have expenses, and this is a time where you, um, a recent mentor told me, you wanna be selfish. You wanna make sure that you take the time and do the things that you need to succeed um, on that test. And having a, a bar scholarship to assist with um, those expenses um, that we've encumbered is uh, really a blessing. So I really appreciate that. Uh, connecting to attorneys that look like me. Um, during our second year as, as uh, law students, we participate in what's called uh, on-campus uh, recruiting or uh, on-campus interviews. And it was particularly disheartening for me. And this is the first time that um, as a law student, I felt that maybe this wasn't the place for me. Um, going through that process and looking on all of the law firms and seeing there were no faces like me or diverse faces altogether. And so I felt like maybe maybe they weren't looking for for uh, uh, lawyers like me. Um, so it was great to have a place and have an ability to connect with uh, attorneys um, that look like me to help me navigate uh, those challenges and help me understand that, hey, it, it is OK. There is this is a place for you and you will succeed. Um, additionally, my, my resume got a facelift, and so I was really um, happy about that. Thank you so much, SAB Strategies. I really appreciated that uh, module. Uh, we've had access to free memberships, so uh, Tampa Bay uh, Federal Association Shine app, which I've used that. It's a it's an app that uh, is almost like Calm, where you're able to go through different modules for. Uh, meditation and, and, and uh, guiding you through some of those uh, modules. Job postings, Jocelyn, Miss Jocelyn does a great job of sending us job postings, scholarship opportunities, and it is amazing to have uh, that, that uh, ability. Uh, next. So my journey to Esquire continues. Uh, like I previously, previously stated, Graduation is next week, and I'm so excited to actually have the opportunity to walk, um, although it's, it's a very limited ceremony. Um, this has been a, a long journey for three years. Um, and even before that, if you count studying for the LSAT and just mentally preparing for uh, trying to, to, to get into uh, law school, uh, this summer I'll be studying for the Georgia bar exam. Um, I've accepted a full-time offer with Honeywell Aerospace as a senior contracts representative. So uh, this whole year and uh, uh, the prior summer, 
Um, I uh, worked with them and, and it's been a pleasure um, working with uh, government contracts, commercial contracts and developing my transactional skills. And I always wanna pay it forward. And, and that's a, a theme that has um, really, um, really resounded through this program is to take what we have um, um, and we need to, to help the next generation uh, behind us. And uh, that's adding to holding high the torch of leadership. And that's what we, what we have to do as, as scholars. And I look forward to serving on boards, um, participating on podcasts and whatever um, may be in the future to help this program get to the next level and help uh, future attorneys just like me. And um, thank you so much everyone for listening to my presentation and thank you uh, to Ms. Ms. Hardrick and for all the board members. And I have really thoroughly enjoyed this program and I'm gonna miss the, the music on Saturday mornings when we're getting ready for these uh, modules. And this has really been a blessing on my life. And um, the journey to Esquire is, is just beginning. And uh, I look forward to all the, the scenic routes that come and um, it will be a great journey. Thank you. But as uh, Jocelyn stated, I have um, been involved with Journey to Esquire in some way since my first year. I entered law school as a second career law student with probably a decade um, on my peers. So I definitely felt like I was out of place. Um, I was in my shell, like I wasn't sure what was going on. I was kind of blind to what I didn't know. Um, so one of my first experiences with Journey to Esquire was the legal writing seminar, which I'm pretty sure I heard about from uh, Stetson students who were participating as scholars in the pilot program. And I went to the legal writing seminar because that was something that I was uh, concerned about and I just remember leaving and feeling encouraged and just feeling good about getting to see other law students who look like me and hearing that other people were also um, I guess having the same worries that I was having so I remember thinking to myself like oh man this is a program that I want to you know continue trying to check in with um, I went to the bar prep seminar as well that year and being a second career student with a child, I know that I need, like there was that pressure of, I need to pass the bar on the first time. So I need to hit the ground running from my first year. So going to that bar prep seminar, it actually reinforced like, okay, I have the ability to do this. Like I'm not, it kind of alleviated that imposter syndrome, which I learned about also in my first year of law school. Didn't know that was a thing. Uh, you can go to the next slide. So going into my second year, um, I was like a duck on the water. On the outside, I'm, I'm somebody who comes across as very calm and most people think I have everything together. So on top, I look like everything's good. On the bottom, like I'm kicking my legs for survival. Um, I had so much that I, like my second year was like the year of yes, I said yes to everything. So I was an intern for a journey to Esquire. I was on the dispute resolution board competing in my first uh, semester. I uh, had a full class load. Um, I was on various student orgs with different positions. I was commuting back to Spring Hill over an hour every few days to spend time with my daughter and coming back. Like looking back on it, I don't really know how I <laughs> stayed afloat, honestly. But from that experience, my legs got stronger. And instead of just treading for survival, it was that I, be I became a swimmer. Um, and part of that was also my experience with Journey to Esquire because I got to sit in on the uh, modules even as an intern. So learning about wellness at that point, I learned that I had to reframe the way I was looking at everything that was on my plate. I was looking at everything like, oh my God, this is something I have to do or this is a responsibility. And I learned that I needed to shift my thinking. Um, there was a quote that was shared this year, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change by Wayne Dwyer. And that's the truth. When I was going through a bad day where I was like, you know what, I don't even wanna go to practice. I don't even wanna do this. I had to look at it like, this is an opportunity, Shannon. Like, this is something you want to do. This is something you get to do, not something you have to do, you get to do it. And that would help me get through those busy days. All right, you can go to the next one. Breathe, girl. I told you, y'all trying to make me cry. <laughs> so my three L year now. I feel, like, sorry, I feel like now I'm a duck 
ready to take off into flight. Um, everything that I've learned with Journey to Esquire from the wellness, from getting to read to elementary students, which was an amazing experience last year where it, kind of, it reinvigorated me. It reminded me that, you know, I'm a role model to somebody else. There are kids out there who are going to be looking up to me and want to know that they can do what we're doing. Because again, only 5% of lawyers are black, right? So most kids probably don't think it's possible until they see us. Um, from our legal writing module, being reminded, you're not stupid, you're inexperienced. Legal writing throughout law school has always been something that I've not necessarily struggled with, but it definitely was my lowest grade uh, of all of law school. And it was my first grade that I got. So I definitely thought I had made a mistake at that point. So that's something I've always been working on throughout law school, but hearing that like, you're not stupid, you're just inexperienced. It's something that you have to learn to do. That has that helped me throughout my clinic this year because I had to do a lot of legal writing and these aren't actual people's cases. But I had to know, like, you're not going to do it perfectly every time. You're going to improve with practice. Um, so that was something that also helped me get through my clinic instead of beating up on myself and letting that imposter syndrome uh, come in and steal my joy. Uh, so that's something that Journey to Esquire has given me. Um, also, Journey to Esquire has just been a safe space for me throughout all of law school. It's a space that I felt like I wanted my peers to have as well. So like I was always telling everyone about Trisha Esquire uh, because it's something that, you know, it just really helped me gain my confidence. It helped me be able to actually share um, with, like share with my peers who are in the field what my true dreams are beyond law school. It helped me share about a nonprofit idea that I've had that my family has known about, but I was afraid to share with people in the field because I thought they'd look at me like, oh, you're crazy, that's not even possible. But like getting to share it in this safe space with my peers and getting back that positive feedback and you know that encouragement, that has been invaluable to my experience in law school. And I know the difference because I hear the difference from some of my peers who didn't take advantage of the program. And I wish they had because honestly for law school, while it was difficult, having this program made it a very enjoyable experience. Like I would do it, I would do it all over again. So thank you, Jocelyn. Thank you to everyone on the board. Like, I, you're never going to get rid of me. I'm going to be here forever. So. <laughs> but thank you, everyone. I'm super just honored. And I especially want to thank Melissa with St. Pete Bar Association, who's been amazing and has connected me with so many people. Like, it's just, I'm so thankful for all of it. So thank you. I have the pleasure of just talking about the people, the individuals that help run the program and just make sure everything works. And those individuals are our interns. We had four law students complete an unpaid internship and each student was in charge of a certain task related to our programming so that they could learn how to run a nonprofit organization and get access to our training modules, mentors, relationships, and networking opportunities. These students all signed an unpaid internship agreement and assisted with creating and publishing the podcast, publishing the editing, publishing and editing the blog, social media, and setting up our modules and events. The class of 2021 interns are Aaron Alden Jr., who assisted with the modules, Diani Stewart, who was in charge of the blog, Hala Akatan, who was in charge of the podcast and Yasmin Ramaha, who ran our social media campaigns. All of these students attend WMQ Cooley Law School. Thank you for your assistance in making sure this program is a resource for all law students. We appreciate your help. Thanks. Esquire podcast is a resource for students and lawyers alike, providing the best way to promote diversity, create access, and feed the legal pipeline with lawyers who will lead, first of all, mentor, and inspire. The format varies between interviews, tutorials, recordings of live events, and individual stories from different professionals in the legal community here in Tampa Bay. The podcast is run by members of our board, our students, and by alumni. So on season one, we had about 13 guests, including Judge Daryl Manning, John Shafino, we had Haley Moss, 
And in season two, we have even more guests. Our latest episode featured the wonderful Melanie Griffin, and all of our episodes are currently streaming. So we have right now about a thousand plays. We definitely want to get more. So be sure to check it out. It is available on all platforms, including Spotify, iTunes, and YouTube. So you can go to our website and you can see our latest episode and definitely stay tuned for more. Congratulations to all the scholars who are graduating today. Um, this is amazing. Uh, my, I'm here to talk about the blog, so let me get started with that. Uh, we also started a Journey to Esquire blog, um, the blog, which covers various topics relevant to the law school experience and preparing to become a lawyer who leads, mentors, and inspires. Diani prepared articles for the blog, wrote two articles herself, and edited and uh, edited submissions from the class of 2020. We published eight articles in total, covering topics from um, topics such as mentoring, lawyer, uh, wellness, and networking. You can access the articles on our website. Um, next year, we are we welcome guest submissions. So if you're if you would like to uh, uh, write one, please contact us. In celebration of Law Day, we will conduct a writing and art competition to acknowledge the contributions of people of color in the law and create interest in school age children and pursuing careers in the law. In 1958, the president designated May 1st as Law Day, which is meant to celebrate and strengthen the American heritage of liberty, justice, and equality under the law. The theme this year was, I may be the first, but I won't be the last. And I'm sure that um, rings a bell with you, Judge Scriven. Um, so very appropriate um, to have that as our theme. And in recent years, there have been several individuals who have become the first in their gender, race, or ethnicity to hold a certain position, including elected positions like president, vice president, presidential nominee for a major political party, Supreme Court justice, all of whom are lawyers. The contest was open to all middle school students, grades six through eight at Franklin or Farrell Middle Schools in Hillsborough County, Florida. We received several submissions, but the following are the winners who all submitted a fictional short story. The winners will receive, a, will receive gift cards in the mail. If the student is present, can you give a wave or hello so everyone can see you? Our first place winner is Julian Besserell. Um, hello. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you. Our second place winner is Angel Medina. Congratulations, Angel. And our third place winner is William Redner. Congratulations, William. And our honorable mention is Gavin King. Thank you, Gavin, for participating. May was one of the founding board members. Like I went to her and said, I have this idea are you interested in helping? And she said, absolutely. <laughs> she signed up. We didn't even have a program yet. I didn't have other board members. I had no money. I had no idea I was going to make this thing happen. But Samaya said, yes. So Samaya is here and wants to say a few words. I just want to give her a chance to do that now. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm so glad to have been able to join this morning. Unlike many of y'all, I'm not dressed all pretty and fancy. Um, I'm having one of the weekends that you will soon experience where you're working from morning until night, um, but I'm glad to have been able to take out the time um, to be here with you and to listen to the truly like really powerful presentations. Um, this is always my favorite part of the program, reflecting on 
um, what I heard from the students during the interviews at the beginning of the year and then seeing like the growth and the maturity that comes by, by the end of the program. Um, so congrat congratulations to all of you for getting this far, for all the tireless work that you put into being a part of this program on top of obviously the demands of law school, um, especially during pandemic times. So kudos to all of you. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to have been on this journey with you. Congratulations. <laughs>